Uh, he has a couple of lawyers. Uh, Magnuson and Halk is the law form form firm. Um, the law form. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Hal Halk, well, Magnuson and Halk, uh, Gunther Magnuson and Hal Halk are uh, the leaders of a pack of werewolves that have a law firm. <laughs> and so they're his lawyers, but they also employ, interestingly enough, a vampire as a lawyer named Leif Helgerson. And these are all, well, not the entire pack, but the majority of the pack are from Iceland as well as Leif. And the reason that they have this, this alliance and they get along so well is because they all hate the Norse god Thor, who is a real asshat. Uh, but Again, we're gonna get in. We're gonna get into that. Like that's this is again groundwork. There's more to that than oh, we all just hate Thor. There's reasons for it. So, yeah. So he runs this bookshop. He's got a blood sucking vampire of a lawyer, which is just spot fucking on. Um. And he's got a death goddess that's on his side. And most importantly of all, he has an Irish wolfhound named Oberon. Who he has crafted a druidic binding to whom he has crafted a druidic binding so that their minds are like connected and they communicate and so he sort of taught Oberon how to talk and so <laughs> Oberon steals the show at every turn it is just so hilarious <laughs> it really is I love Oberon actually side note you love my side note so don't complain <clears throat> Oberon is the reason that I would like to one day own a nice, huge tract of land, Monty Python reference, and uh, and get myself an Irish wolfhound and name him Snuggle Pumpkin. Yes, <laughs> because I I love Oberon. I love him. So, I want my own Oberon. And I want Atticus O'Sullivan to be real so that I can have him, like, here, bind my mind to my dog so that we can have communications and we can talk about the way of five meats again. You will understand that later. Especially if you stop listening now and go read, read the books, okay? <clears throat> so, that's, that's, uh, oh, no, 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 there's, there's more that I have to explain. So, I was like, oh, that's all the groundwork. Nope, nope, nope. Also in Tempe is a coven of Polish witches who are worshippers, allies, minions, for lack of a better word, of the uh, Slavic goddesses the Zorias, which I actually discussed in in an episode of the uh, uh, American Gods series that I did. Um, so, and Atticus doesn't trust witches at all, but since these witches kind of leave him alone, they're sort of like a live and let live, he, you know, it's like, you stay over there and I'm going to stay over here. And, I mean, they've done favors for each other a couple of times, but they're they're in no way friendly. Um, one of said favors is he flew to San Francisco, I think, yeah, he flew he flew to the the coast somewhere. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's San Francisco. And retrieved a ruby ne necklace from under underwater that was hidden underwater and he gave it to the leader of the coven. Uh 
Radamiwa. I think that's what her name was. <clears throat> and, um, and, so, and, and, and in return, Radamiwa put a cloak on his magical sword <laughs> so that Angus Og could not divine it where it is and thus find Atticus, etc., etc. So that's, that's the basis of his life at this point if I haven't missed anything out. So basically what Hounded is is just it is about Atticus it, it, it opens with Atticus getting attacked by fairies. And not like, you know, winged little sparkly things. No, these are the fae. Right? So they look, what's the word that he used? He used, um, how does he put it? Man pretty. These are man pretty fairies that look like Orlando Bloom, essentially. And... <laughs> And they attack him, and he kicks their ass because he's fucking awesome. Oh, no! I forgot the most important part! Why is he called the Iron Druid? Duh, Becca! Oh, my gosh! So, over the centuries, in order to protect himself from the Fae and the fairies, and this is how he defeats the fairies, by the way, he has crafted a necklace with an iron amulet, and he has bound that iron amulet through druidic juju it's 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 all it, it makes sense when when he explains it but it's bound to his aura so that if he even touches a fairy or a fae creature or a pixie or a, you know whatever they like they poof because iron kills magic it's fucking awesome so he's the iron druid and it is like it vexes the irish Fae so much because they're like you, you, no, go fuck off, no evil iron, no, so <laughs> so that's the most important part, so he defeats these fairies, the Morgan comes by and says, hey, by the way, Angus Og like, knows where you are, and he goes, uh, yeah duh <laughs> and so now he's faced with this decision of should I, should I stand up and fight or should I just pack up everything and leave and keep running and he goes, you know what? I like it here. I like my life. I don't want to leave. Bye. And so he he decides to stick around and fight it out. Well, in the process of sticking around and fighting it out, he discovers that his favorite bartender... Granuel, very sexy lady, <laughs> is sharing her brain with an Indian witch who is who's capable of taking her consciousness from one body to another body and you know and and is kind of trying to atone for all the evil she's done over her long lifetime. And so she's sort of borrowing Granuel's body for the time being, and and essentially says makes herself in invaluable. I guess is the word I'm looking for. It makes herself a necessity to Atticus's epic showdown. In exchange for Atticus agreeing to take on Granuel as his apprentice, which is fun and not so fun because he kind of likes her. Bitch, I hate her. <laughs> well, I don't hate her. She's fucking awesome. But I hate that she has my soulmate to flirt with. This is all fictional. How insane am I? <laughs> so... This is all a build up to this this epic showdown. Now, before this this showdown goes down, a few things happen that are very significant. Um, Angus Og makes 
himself an alliance with the Polish coven and actually, um, well, with some of the Polish coven, about half of it, and actually splinters it when the other half figures out what the first half has been doing. And they're like, oh, no, we don't want to be a part of that. And so they they fraction off and, and start their own coven. And that's fun. <laughs> and uh, and as part of their alliance with Angus Og, the uh, not so nice witches kidnap one of the werewolves, Hal Halk. They they kidnap him, which pisses off the pack entirely, and so they all go after everything, so that helps Atticus. But in the process of doing so, because the witches are prepared for this, um, I think they lose a couple of pack members, and a few of them are, are wounded, and so that's problematic, and that's going to come up later. Just giving you a heads up. But there's this... Epic, epic, epic showdown at the end that <laughs> that includes a really, really funny scene that I actually missed the first time because it was just like this flash of a moment. And I don't know how I missed it the first time I listened to the book, but it took me like about ten listens before I finally caught it. Where the Morgan takes a shit on Angus Og, and I was like, yay! Because, okay, cause, let me let me explain. Literally, she takes a shit because she can take a, the form of a crow, so she, like, flies at his face and takes a shit on his head, and it's, like, really awesome. <laughs> Great. But it involves demons, and Angus Og, like, fucks everything up. And, uh... And he, like, actually, he takes so much power from the earth that, uh, I, I forget what the actual mileage is. I want to say about a two-mile radius around this area in, in Arizona actually, like, is dead. And, and because he decides he wants to summon a bunch of demons to fight his cause. And he, and he gets the, the Christian idea of death on his side because he knows that the morrigan will not take atticus and so he's like all right i'll get another death god person to take this guy and ultimately what ends up happening is atticus defeats angus og and death takes angus og to the christian hell because <laughs> the morrigan's like fuck you you don't get to come back to Tier Nanog or Maumel or anything like that. No. You wanted that guy on your side, you get to go hang out with him for all eternity. So this all this is all just laying groundwork for the next like eight books, okay? So it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack because it's just but it's so action packed and it's just like one thing after another after another after another after another. And it is it's amazing, and I still feel like I missed something out. Oh, Briad. Of course, Briad. So, Briad is Angus Og's half sister. She's Irish god of goddess of the forge and of poetry, and I think of a couple of different things. But, anyways, Briad. Um, is considered first among the Fae, if I'm not mistaken. And in this book, her husband, Bress, decides to ally himself with Angus Og. And Bria doesn't really like Angus either. And so she wants Angus taken out. And so she... She and the Irish goddess of the hunt, Flittish, do some sneaky fucked up shit 
to to set 